Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. So this is a play, it's a very famous one. Ibsen, I always joke, he's the answer. Whenever you watch a quiz program and they say, which Norwegian playwright, it's always Ibsen. Uh, as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs. I don't have a huge number, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Henrik Ibsen, the, in fact this isn't even a blurb, this is just about Ibsen, but hey ho. Henrik Ibsen, the most influential dramatist since Shakespeare, was born at Skien in Norway in 1828. After years of failure and poverty, he emigrated at the age of 36 to Italy, and there wrote Brand, which established his reputation in Scandinavia, though he did not become internationally famous until the publication of A Doll's House in 1879. He remained in self-imposed exile until 1891, writing Ghost in 1881, The Wild Duck in 1884, Hedda Gabler in 18 1890 and the master builder in 1892 shortly after his return to Christiana now Oslo he died in 1906 Michael Meyer is the first English translator to produce translations of all Ibsen's major plays which do justice to the originals both in performance and on the printed page. He is also the author of what has been widely acclaimed as the definitive biography of Ibsen. So here in the introduction it says, uh, The characters do not, as occasionally happens in the earlier play, tell each other what the listener already knows for the benefit of the audience. Points once made are not drummed home in the manner beloved by politicians. The final curtain is not tediously delayed after the climax has been reached, an elementary fault which every playwright learns reluctantly to avoid, the more reluctantly if he has ever written a novel, in which such rapid wind-ups seem melodramatic. And we get this line from Helmer, he goes, Oh Nora, Nora, how like a woman? No, but seriously Nora, you know how I feel about this. No debts, never borrow. A home that is founded on debts and borrowing can never be a place of freedom and beauty. We two have stuck it out bravely up to now, and we shall continue to do so for the few weeks that remain. And as we find out later, that is not strictly speaking true. The wife is keeping a secret from the husband. And I love this line, so um, Nora's father dies and she goes, I never saw him again, Christine. Oh, it's the saddest thing that's happened to me since I got married. And that to me implies that be it getting married was even sadder than her father dying. Get a bit of casual racism here, so Helmer goes, but knitting now, that's an ugly business, can't help it. Look, arms all huddled up, great clumsy needles going up and down, makes you look like a damn Chinaman. And Ranky says, uh, why shouldn't one make the most of this world as much as one can and for as long as one can? The wine was excellent, especially the champagne. You notice that too, it's almost incredible how much I managed to get down. And then Nora goes, Torvald drank a lot of champagne too this evening. Oh, yes, it always makes him merry afterwards. And then Rank says, well, why shouldn't a man have a merry evening after a well-spent day? And so Helmer eventually finds out that Nora has been keeping this secret from him, that she borrowed some money um, by committing a, a bit of light fraud. Um, and he goes off on this tant like soliloquy. He basically says, we can't be together anymore. And then the evidence of it is destroyed. And he goes, he basically changes his mind going, okay, we're saved. We can be together. And he goes, you have loved me as a wife should love a husband. It was simply that in your inexperience, you chose the wrong means. But do you think I love you any the less because you don't know how to act on your own initiative? No, no. Just lean on me. I shall counsel you. I shall guide you. I would not be a true man if your feminine helplessness did not make you doubly attractive in my eyes. You mustn't mind the harsh words I said to you in those first dreadful moments when my whole world seemed to be tumbling about my ears. I have forgiven you, Nora. I swear it to you, I have forgiven you. And uh, the good news is, is that Nora's not an idiot. And she basically goes, yeah, no, I'm, I'm leaving you because you're an asshole. And then a few bits I wanted to uh, bring out from the appendix. So it says, uh, the first performance of A Doll's House in England was, according to Bernard Shaw, a private reading on a first floor in a Bloomsbury lodging house. Karl Marx's youngest daughter played Nora Helmer and Bernard Shaw played uh, Krogstad. And it also includes some like various reviews, including a version produced by Mr. Addison that did not go down well. So I'm gonna read you this little review out of it here. It has been proved of old that amateurs rush in where artists fear to tread, but never was there a more audacious case in point than the late performance of A. Duckenheim at the School of Dramatic Art. Since I assisted with two or three other barbarians at a Chinese tragedy in San Francisco, I have not seen an audience so helplessly bewildered at that which stoically sat out Miss Lord's translation of Ibsen's play. The actors themselves had a glimmering idea of the plot and situations, but even this they failed to convey to the spectators. As for the characterization, the tendency, the satire, had the play been in Chinese they could have not been more completely lost upon performers and spectators alike. The whole affair reminded me of the memorable performance of the 1603 quarto of Hamlet at St George's Hall, with a stage arranged after the Elizabethan manner. Imagine the conception of Shakespeare which a spectator who had never heard of him would have received from this performance of Hamlet. As far or further from the truth is the conception of Henrik Ibsen conveyed by the scribbler's travesty to the minds of those who witnessed it. And he just sort of goes on and on and on. 
So yeah, A Doll's House by Henry Gibson. Um, I think it's one of those plays where there's a sort of a simple reading of the plot and then you could go in and you would pick up all kinds of nuances. Like even just flicking back through, I've noticed a few things that I hadn't noticed on my first read through. But I don't want to totally spoil it for you. I do think it would be worth seeing it staged as well. Like don't let those naysayers or those negative reviews put you off it. Because it has been successfully staged by better translators since then. Um, but yeah, A Doll's House by Henry Gibson. I gave it, you know, a 4 out of 5. Um, it was pretty good. I will probably read some more Ibsen at some point, but he's not quite up there yet on my list of people who I'm going to try and read everything by. So there we have it. That's what I made of A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book or seen this play. I'd love to hear what you think. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.